Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Navios Maritime Partners LP, ticker symbol NMM. At the time of recording today's video, Navios is trading for $26.15 per share. Year to date, they are up 4%, which is in stark contrast to most of the rest of the market, which is down so far in 2022. Over the past year, however, they're down 13%. Over three years, they're up at a rate of 16% compounded annually. We can see a huge recovery here since COVID. Over five years, they're down at a rate of about 3.5% annually. And going back nearly 15 years ago to when Navios became a publicly traded business, right. About a year before the global financial crisis, their stock price is down 90% over this time frame. So it went down quite dramatically from August 2014 to about February of 2016. So if you'd want a more accurate picture of the business over this time frame, I highly would recommend going back and reading through their 10Ks to understand exactly what transpired in Navios over the last 15 years or so. <laughs> Navios is trading snugly between their 52 week high and their 52 week low. Then they have a market cap of nearly $805 million. For some background about Navios, Navios Maritime Partners LP is a seaborne shipping company. It owns and operates dry cargo and container vessels with primary long-term and staggered expiration charters. The firm's fleet consists of 26 Panamax vessels, 24 Cape size vessels, four Ultra Handymax vessels, 47 container ships, and 45 tankers. It earns revenues through chartering vessels and voyage contracts. Olympos Maritime Limited serves as the general partner of, Maritime, of Navios Maritime Partners LP. The company was founded in 2007 and is based in Monaco. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are going to be performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics, to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Navios based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. It will continue to improve and get better over time. And so with that disclaimer and this background about Navios, let's get right into our analysis. Starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. The reasons we want this is because over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So taking a look at Navios here, they earned below average returns on capital in four out of these five years. Last year, they were at slightly above average returns on capital. And over the last 12 months, they've actually earned about 12.5% returns on capital. However, averaged out, they're only earning returns on capital that are a little under 5%. This is going to be an X to start off here with our first metric. Metric number two, we're taking a high level look at the cash coming into the business. So we're looking for their revenues, net incomes, and free cash flows to have grown over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing. Either all three of these are going to be up for a check or if even one of them is down, this whole metric is gonna be an X. Over this time frame, they've more than tripled their revenues and they've taken their net income from being negative in 2017 to earning about half a billion dollars in earnings last year. Their free cash flows were pretty negative in 2017. At the end of 2021, they were still negative. However, if we look at their last 12 months, they've actually produced about $68 million of free cash flow. So that is cash that's being generated by the business. So because they have this positive free cash flow in the last 12 months, we're going to give them this metric on metric number two for Navios. Metric number three is going to be a bit skewed here because they are an LP, so they are a limited partner. So ticker doesn't have the information about their shares outstanding. So for metric number three here, we're relying on the fact that they had negative earnings in 2017 and now they had positive earnings in 2021. So this is going to be a check here. Again, this one's not going to be as accurate just because we don't have the right data for this. Metric number four, typically we're looking for five-year free cash flow per share growth. So similar to metric number three, which was five-year earnings per share growth, this one's also skewed because of some of that missing data. Here again, relative to their market cap, they had pretty negative free cash flows in 2017. And during 2021, they were producing negative free cash flows. But as we found out over the last 12 months, they have positive free cash flow. 
So we're going to give them this metric too, as they've been able to turn this around and now they're generating positive free cash flows in their business. So, so far through four metrics, we've got three checks. Next up, metric number five, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term cash equivalents to be below the amount of free cash flow that they've generated in the last five years. So this will help us determine how the business is levered relative to their abilities to produce free cash flows. This is important because free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. It can be used to pay dividends, buy back shares, make acquisitions, reinvest back in the business, or pay down debt. So a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is ultimately what that business is going to be worth. So in the case of Navios, at the end of last year, they had $1.4 billion of net debt. Over the last 12 months, they've decreased this. They now have $1.1 billion of net debt. However, over the last five years, even including the last 12 months, so really closer to five and a half years, they've had negative free cash flows over this time frame. So looking at their cash flow statement in more depth, we can see that the real cause of this is that the business has had to put a lot into CapEx. Even with the sale of property, plant, and equipment that they've done over this time frame, in most of these years, they're still sinking money into the business at these below average rates of return. So that is not a good sign at all. This would point to Navios falling into the bucket of what Warren Buffett would call a terrible business. A business that needs ever greater amounts of money sunk into it at below average returns. To Warren Buffett, the best kinds of businesses are either businesses that are able to grow, needing almost no capital returned into it, or even better yet, a business that's able to grow with high rates of return on capital that's able to keep redeploying that capital into their business and really turn into one of these long-term compounders. So this is not the case here at all for Navios. This is going to be an X on metric number five. And so far through five metrics, we've got three checks and two Xs. Then finally, the big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Navios's average five-year free cash flow yield relative to their total enterprise value to be above 5%. So this is going to give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate, which will give us a reason to be interested in the business. Total enterprise value is going to give us a more realistic economic picture than market cap would alone. It's going to include both market cap and Navios's net debt position. So while they have a market cap of under a billion dollars, they have a total enterprise value of nearly $1.9 billion. So they've got quite a bit of debt here with $1.1 billion of net debt. And as we learned, they had negative free cash flows over this time frame. So this is going to be an X on metric number six. If instead we were to adjust this metric and we were only using their last 12 months of free cash flow, then they produced $68 million of free cash flow in the last 12 months. If we would divide their $68 million of last 12 months of free cash flow by their $1.9 billion enterprise value, we would only get a yield of about 3.5% of their current free cash flows over the last 12 months to their enterprise value. So that is still going to be just about the risk-free rate here, which we're using the 10-year treasury. Stocks in general are going to want a premium to the risk-free rate. So this is below that 5% metric we we're looking for, and this is still an X here on Navios. Then interesting to note here, Navios is paying out dividends even in these years that they produced negative free cash flows. So this is likely not a prudent use of capital in terms of capital allocation. And really we want a business to be paying out dividends only when they're producing free cash flows that are sustainable for those dividend payments. So this means that in these years that Navios was paying out dividends while they were producing negative free cash flows, they were having to raise additional capital either by raising debt, diluting existing partners, or selling off assets to be able to raise the money for these dividends. So this is not a good use of capital allocation here, especially as we learned that the business wasn't squeamish in terms of reinvesting a lot of capex into the company at below average rates of return. Not great use of capital here. So in summary, Navios Maritime Partners Limited checks the box on three out of six of our metrics. They have produced negative free cash flows over the last five years, so they're off when it comes to our metrics that are valuing their free cash flows, producing $60 million of free cash flow in the last 12 months. They still have a below average free cash flow to total enterprise value yield. Then the business is also generating below average returns on capital. 
They're highly levered relative to their abilities to produce free cash flows. However, over this time frame, their earnings, revenues, and free cash flows are up. So technically, we gave it to them that their per share metrics were up, even though we didn't have that data available to us. The big thing to note about Navios is that they operate in a highly cyclical industry. The global shipping market is known for these huge boom and bust cycles where the industry is overly supplied in good times. And then because it has a long lead time in bad times, they can be down for quite a while. So in the case of Navios, they both operate in a very hard cyclical industry and they had some questionable capital allocation choices at best. So this is a business that you could learn more about. If you're interested in doing so, I'd recommend checking out their 10Ks and getting a deeper history of the business. As we found out since they went public nearly 15 years ago, their stock price is down about 90.5%. They've lost a ton of value over this time frame. if you've been a long-term shareholder of the business. Keep in mind that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It is not a buy or a sell recommendation of any security. Instead, it's this holistic beginning understanding that serves to determine whether it's worth your while to dig in and learn more about the business. If you're interested in learning more about Navios, I highly recommend learning about the business as if you owned 100% of it. You want to understand all of its ins and outs and come to truly understand the essence of the business. And if you run into any questions at all about Navios, please consult with the properly registered financial or legal professionals. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Navios Maritime Partners LP, ticker symbol NMM. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next. Thanks for learning about Navios with me and have a great day.